biodiesel today is made with soy oil and you can make it with soy oil or canola oil, peanut oil, or any of the oils that we typically and have historically cooked our foods in. Uh, we're actually in the second year or second season of uh, trying out canola for this area. Typically the growing season is from about March to November so growers actually don't grow anything from November to March so by finding a winter variety of canola that will produce and do well in this area during that time will not only give farmers another revenue but as well as produce a feedstock for this biodiesel project as well as provide a different uh, rotation into their crops. We use our biodiesel currently to operate my company's vehicles. Uh, the majority of our tractors are running on biodiesel. We're actually at a B20, which is 20% biodiesel, 80% petroleum diesel. The other four vehicles that are on the station at, at, you know, on a consistent basis are running 100% biodiesel, but those are fleet, fleet vehicles for the Center for Excellence, which run mainly between Carlsbad and, and Artesia on a, on a daily basis. One of the benefits of biodiesel is it has great lubricity. What lubricity means is that it lubricates the engine much better than some of our traditional fuels. Fuels like standard petroleum diesel, for, for example, the new low sulfur diesel does not provide any lubricity for the motor. Biodiesel, on the other hand, does. And consequently, you can extend the life of your engine by burning biodiesel. Another thing is, is that biodiesel is a great solvent. When you put biodiesel in the fuel system of a standard diesel engine, it actually cleans out the fuel system. Biodiesel actually removes the scale and debris that was left by standard petroleum diesel. And the third thing is that biodiesel, there are no hazardous emissions, and it's renewable. Fossil fuels, like regular standard petroleum crude oil that we currently refine to make gasoline and diesel for our transportation vehicles is non-renewable. It took millions of years for the earth to make this stuff. Biodiesel on the other hand can be made from renewable sources, things that we can grow year to year and year to year. Here at the center we actually raise a microalgae, an algae that's only two microns in size. It's much smaller than a human red blood cell. These two micron microorganisms grow in the ocean. They're a naturally occurring algae, they're a brine algae, they're a saltwater algae, and they actually contain about 40 percent oil. Now that means that if you were to take one of these small little algae and you weigh it, 40 percent of that weight is oil. When you make biodiesel from the oil that's contained in the algae, your waste products, your waste stream consists of glycerin and basically dead algae. Well, one of the strains that we're working with right now can actually live in, in, a, in a brine water, a salt water, that's fully saturated. You know, seawater is only about 2%. It's never any more than 4% salt. Well, we have an algae right now that we're growing that will grow in water that's 30% salt and still make oil. We've selected brine algae because southeast New Mexico sits on top of a brine ocean, a large underground ocean of water that is salty. So we're experimenting with this algae because we believe we can take this salt water that cannot be used for irrigation and it can't be used to drink. So to most people it has no value, but to us it has a great value because we can grow algae in it. Our major motive from our board and our research organization is to produce a product that is very competitive with diesel, oil-based diesel in the marketplace. A standard barrel of oil, 42 gallon barrel of oil, is over $100 now. We would like to be able to grow our algae and produce a barrel of oil for around $80 or less. If you're going to produce rapeseed oil, which produces canola oil, you end up getting maybe 165, 70 gallons per acre. On an acre of algae, we believe that we can get between 5,000 and 10,000 gallons per acre, a geometric increase in volume of production. If we can hit that target, we can change the profile of fuel, not only nationally, but internationally. It is a huge, huge issue, not only for our children, our grandchildren, but we have to do something today. We have the only form of renewable fuel that can take the place of petroleum, and that's exciting. So we know that that can change the entire 
face of the international spectrum because even poor countries can go out and dig ponds. They can grow algae. It's a matter of them having access to the technology that will allow them to make fuel from these tiny microorganisms.